Hello, my name is Savio and welcome to another open source video. This is going to be the part one of our WebSocket videos. So, this is our first part of the WebSocket tool videos and in this part we will be seeing how to create a WebSocket server, basic stuff, how to accept HTTP requests with the same server, how to push incoming messages to all connections, and how to create a simple WebSocket client. So if you are still asking yourself why WebSocket is useful, we can mention a few things uh, for it. For example, WebSockets are useful for multimedia chats, social feeds, multiplayer games, collaborative editing, online education, etc. So everything that relies on real-time transfer of information, WebSockets is going to be very useful. So let's start by talking about sockets. So sockets uh, has a very useful uh, this, uh, definition, which is a socket is an endpoint of a two-way communication link between two programs running on the network. So going from there, uh, and WebSocket being an extension of sockets, uh, WebSocket is the link between the server and the browser. So we can transfer real-time information between both. So on HTTP connection, uh, the server receives, listens to requests from the, from the browser and responds. That's it. The server doesn't know the address of the client in the browser. So if the server needs to send something to the browser, it needs to send when there is a request in progress. The WebSocket, on, on the other hand, uh, it knows the address of the browser so you can send information to the browser anytime you need. So that's the main advantage. So let's go to OpenSwall. On OpenSwall, everything starts with the TCP server, which is a Unix socket server uh, implemented uh, in a class called server. So this is the first implementation. From that, they extended and they built the HTTP server uh, so the API server uh, inherits all the functionalities existent in the TCP servers and it implements the servers needed for what we call websites. From there, they extend it again and they build a WebSocket server, which inherits all the other two servers functionalities. So, and this is something that we are going to see in this video. Uh, the WebSocket server on Swole and serve uh, HTTP requests as well. You can start by implementing a simple server here. Uh, let's start by creating a file. We're going to name this file AWS server. And in this file, we're going to create a simple implementation of a WebSocket server. So go there, server, okay. server, and this is going to be a WebSocket server. You're going to listen to 0, 0, 0, 0, because I'm not, I don't want to be on a local host. Uh, call if you that, and I'm going to this stop, and then, once we have the server implemented like this, we can uh, implement its callbacks. So we go there and implement, for example, there is a start callback, which is when the connection starts, and the server actually when the server starts to listen. Connection. So, so here, and the first uh, parameter is the server itself. And here, let's write something like WebSocket serve start at. And let's let's grab the port dynamically. Okay. 
Yep. I think that's enough. So then we can go over here and implement the search event callback. There's a typo here. And for this message, uh, first parameter server. All, all of these you can find in the website documentation. Website, OpenSwall, official website, openswall.com. So let's go there. The second parameter is the frame. And the frame is just the WebSocket frame. Uh, and this is basically the message that goes back and forth. So let's write down the message that is coming from the client right here. So for example, uh, received message. And the message could be the plain data. That's it. And then uh, let's just do like this and then uh, let's start. Okay. So here we have a simple implementation of the server. We're not going to stop here and analyze right now. Let's move forward and implement a few other stuff. The first thing I want right now is a client for me to test this WebSocket server. So for that, we're going to implement uh, the request callback, which is uh, natural on the HTTP server, but the WebSocket server also has its available. And here we have a request. to have everything in the top going back there also the response and that would be enough for now and here uh, going to pause and bring one thing that we have in the other uh, videos uh, when we were talking about uh, when we were building an HTTP server, which is I'm going to use a library called uh, plates or templating to serve a, a template here in order to have our client for us to test. In order to have that, we're going on our terminal and, and bring this package. So, it will require plates. And that's it. Back on our code here, we are going to start by find the auto load from composer since we've had to use it. And now we can continue our code right here. So let's first implement uh, the code. Uh, I already have some pseudocode prepared for us, which is right here. And then we can just import our engine. And this code is basically uh, loading the, the template engine. And then we set the headers, which we're going to serve where we say that we're going to serve HTML code and then we render the home template and this template is located in the views directory so let's go there and create the views directory and in the views directory we're going to bring some code basically uh, we will have an HTTP template so first uh, we're going to put layout here. I already have the very basic layout so there. Each with template. And here 
this and here is where our page is going to show so let's go there and bring our page i already have a page prepared here save us time and here we are going to go over our uh, client so basically we have a form and this form we have an id so we can interact via javascript and we have a message box which is a basic input and the message goes right there then we have a submit in order to submit this message and the output is a div that will receive everything that comes from the websocket server as messages and then our server is a i starting a literal object and i'm running the function init on it so let's go there and see what it is the websocket is a property this is going to be the the client websocket implementation and then we have the configurations which points to the websocket server running and here we have we connect to the server and the connect server is basically the implementation of the WebSocket client library native JavaScript. So we, just as we did in the web server, we do on our client, we implement the callbacks. So on message, on close, on open, things like that. And we write stuff down. So basically what we're doing is we console log everywhere. And uh, when there is a message, coming in, we handle incoming message. There is another method handling that and everything else is just console log. And if we go to handle incoming message, we are just grabbing the output and adding, appending a child that is just a li. So if you see the output is a ul and every, every new message is going to be a new item in the list, okay? So, handle submit. So, listen events, let's just go there. And the events is the form. Remember that we have an ID. In the form, we listen to the event submit. And then we, co we call this function. We prevent default. So, the form is never really submitted using the default behavior. And then we just send a message with that input to the server and that's all it does it communicates to the server by sending a message listening and writing down the output in a list that's what our client okay so this is the kind that we are serving right here there is one missing spot here before we can actually test our server which is i want to broadcast to all users connected, not just the main user. Right now, we are not sending any message back when there is a message coming in. And uh, instead of just writing the message that sends to the customer connected immediately, uh, the customer immediately connected, I'm going to broadcast to everybody connected, just as an example. So let's go there. We can run a for each on a server property called connections. So let's go there. Connections. And this is a list of FD, which is file descriptors. Uh, you can search more how open source works. File descriptors are the, uh, is not a open source specific, is a Linux specific functionality, which is a file descriptor. Every connection is re registered in a file. And the file descriptor is the ID of that file, kind of the way to access it. So if this server is, has established connection to this FD, uh, if there is no established connection, we continue, we ignore this. But if there is, we go there and push a message. Okay, so by doing this, we broadcast this, every incoming message to everybody connected. So let's go there and check if everything worked as, as expected. To test if our server is working as expected, first we start our server and then we go 
on the browser and connect and it seems to be against expected let's see oh it worked fine and now we're going to test with multiple clients let's go there and restart our server we're restarted let's connect here connect here now we have two clients connected so let's go there and test both received let's test one both received worked perfectly so in this video so how to create a websocket server how to accept each request with the same server how to push incoming messages to all connections and how to create a simple websocket client in the next video we will see uh, how to bring this WebSocket server understanding and knowledge to build this functionality in our simple app that has been built throughout our videos. See you in the next video.